Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Sister Amina Blake coming to you with part three of New Muslim Bites. And as I mentioned last time, this time we're going to be talking about the area of shirk. Now, shirk is the exact opposite of what we were talking about last time, which was tawheed, which was which is believing in the oneness of Allah. Now, shirk is the opposite of this. This is when we put a partnership or associating others with Allah. And this can come in many, many different forms. In Surah 4, verse 48, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surely Allah will not forgive those or association of partners with him. But of course, in order to avoid something, we must understand what it is in the first place. Now, there are two distinct areas of shirk that have been defined by the scholars. One of them is shirk al-akbar, which is the major shirk, and the other one is shirk al-asghar, which means the minor shirk. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the major shirk. Now, if you remember, we talked about Tawheed in Rububiyya, which means the believing in the oneness of Allah through his Lordship. Today, we're going to talk about the opposite of this, which is Shirak in Rububiyya, which is when people associate others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now, there are lots of examples with this, uh, both from within Islam, unfortunately, and from outside Islam. Of the obvious one uh, that we know about in the UK is where the, the, the Trinity, where you have uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Christians believe in Allah, um, but then they believe in um, Isa alayhi salam as the son of Allah. And for example, in Hinduism, uh, they have, they believe in the one God, the creator, but they're not, their God called Brahman has partners called Vishnu and Shiva um, and in some branches other gods who share this partnership with him. So they almost like share the power. They are delegated jobs. Now, another type of Shirak in Rububiya, which will surprise some people, is the belief that there is no God, because obviously this is also a belief. It's the belief that there is no God. So, for example, people who believe in Darwinism, um, who say that there is no God at all, and these are people who um, commit shirk in rububiyya, but in the opposite way. Uh, another good example of this is the ancient pharaohs. Uh, the pharaoh of Musa, alayhi salam, um, who believed and said to the, his people, say that I am your Lord, the Most High, subhanAllah. Whereas we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord Most High and nobody else can create or has power over the life of, and death or anything except him. The third area is believing that a person, um, a thing such as a statue or an amulet or anything for that matter, has power of its own um, and that all that it is a manifestation of Allah. Uh, there are some sects um, of Muslims who believe, for example, that certain people are manifestations of Allah. So they have almost this, this power. Um, but of course, as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who has the power. So, shirk al-akbar, to worship anything other than Allah. Um, and there are some obvious ones and some less obvious ones. Um, and so what we're going to do uh, next time in the next session, inshallah, is explore that in a little bit more detail. And we are going to have a look at, at shirk al-asghar and talk a little bit in more detail about what the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet peace be upon him, said about this type of shirk and how we can avoid that as well. So, so for this time, inshallah, I will...